So we can also use stratigraphic columns to represent uh, significant thicknesses of rock. So the photo on the right shows uh, two of the Geology 109 students from a few years ago using a Jacob staff to measure the thickness of rocks, um, which are turbidites. All right, so each one of these beds that's sticking up uh, is a sandstone. And then the darker beds in here that are weathering out a little bit recessively are mudstones. All right, and so in this is in this particular case, there are thin turbidites with uh, various of the boma faces facies, and they're separated by the mudstones, which again you can see under the student's foot here. Uh, which is the Bauma E sequence. And then when you get over here, we have a much thicker sandstone, which also represents uh, turbidites. It's actually a couple of uh, flows. So this is a uh, coarse uh, sandstone here. All right, so we have a big change in the character of the beds between where they're measuring and this thick sandstone here. So what they're doing in the field is uh, measuring the thicknesses of those beds, uh, characterizing the grain size, and uh, recording it in their notebook uh, using a graph something like we have on the side here. Okay. So um, we will start our stratigraphic column uh, right under this geologist's foot. And the Jacob staff is a 1.5 meters long, and I marked off the approximate 10 centimeter zones here. So um, we're going to measure and draw a stratigraphic column for about uh, a meter and a half to here, and then we'll get to the coarse sand. So let's say two meters. So we need uh, two meters total. And I happen to know I have. Um, 30 uh, lines here, so but we're only doing 10. We could do 10 centimeters uh, per line, which would be represent each one of these. So my centimeters didn't uh, count them up. So this would be 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. 10, 20, 30, 40, 150, which is one Jacob staff length. Uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, that's 200. And I think that's about all, all we'll draw right now. Okay. So it's mostly sand. I mean, it's mostly a mix of sand and shale. Right, so um, we'll, we'll say that the mudstone, the grain size is between clay and silt. It's a mix between those two, uh, but we're starting out on a sand bed. And uh, we can't tell necessarily what sand size it is, so I am going to assume that it's medium sand, and we have a little less than 10 centimeters thick here. So we have our sandstone here. Then we have a little bit of a, sh a shale uh, in this zone right here. And if we look laterally, it looks like there are a couple of very thin sand beds, but that goes up to, so this is 10, 20, that goes up to 30 centimeters, 10, 20, 30, uh, before the next big sand bed. So if I was in the field, I would be drawing this precisely, often using a ruler. Okay, there are a few sand beds in there, but they're sort of too thin for me to measure. So I'm going to draw a line coming out just to uh, represent uh, those sandstone beds. Uh, maybe there are two. I'll draw two. Okay. And so I can make notes about the texture here, and um, I'm going to basically say uh, thin SS for sandstone beds. Um, and I'm going to say that they're schematic. 
uh, meaning that I didn't measure those exactly. Okay. Then we have a sandstone bed that looks look like about five centimeters thick, maybe a mudstone that's five centimeters thick. So I'll draw that's five centimeters is half that. And then we have some mudstone again, and then we have another sandstone that's maybe not quite 10 centimeters thick here. And then we have this area that looks like it's mud. If I look over here, I'm seeing some mud and then some sandstone beds and then this thick, this thick sandstone again. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, between 70 and 80, I have a sandstone bed that's 10 centimeters thick. So 50, 60, 70, and 80. So I have a sandstone bed here. Right, and between that we have two little sandstone beds and some mud, so I'm going to do the sandstone beds, the thin ones, schematically again here. And then we have mudstone between them. Let's, let's redraw that a little bit finer grade here. Okay. So then we have a mix of those again um, coming up, and I'm not going to, to draw all of them. Um, so let's, it goes to about a meter and a half in here. And then um, if I was in the field, I would measure it, but let's say that this is another 50 centimeters. So that means that this coarse sand would start at our, our two meters. up here. All right. So that is a very, very flat bed and it would go all the way out to coarse sand, which is this one I think, and then goes up here. Okay. And it's mostly massive here. Okay. And then if I was measuring the field again, I would basically uh, fill this in with the beds of sandstone and mudstone. So I am using the term shale as well. When I'm, when I'm doing my um, strat columns, I usually try to say mudstone um, because sand and shale both start with us. Okay. So what we do is we, we basically can measure successive beds and if uh, when we're in the field we can actually see the sedimentary structures in them and so we could put in the sedimentary structures, say this is um, a planar lamination uh, there are also ripples in these rocks So they happen to be turbidites, so almost always they have the planar lamination on the bottom, and then the ripple lamination is above that. Um, but maybe they don't all have that. So if I was in the field, I would actually be recording what I see and, and only what I see. Okay. So let's, let's just focus on this part that I actually filled out here. So this is a stratigraphic section that represents uh, this component of rocks in through here. So with time and practice, you can measure uh, tens or even hundreds of meters of section like this, and it gives you a record of the grain size and the sedimentary structures and the thickness of beds and how they are organized relative to each other. Thanks for watching.